In early September of 1883, the people of Wausau, Wisconsin, and the surrounding communities of Marathon County turned out in large numbers to enjoy a parade organized to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the first Germans to settle in North America. One account of the event published later, but almost certainly written by the Judge Louis Marchetti, stated that it is the unanimous voice that the street procession was the grandest ever witnessed at Wassa, and would have done honor to a place ten times the population of our place. As it was, it proved a sublime affair, and the day will long live green in the memories not only of our German fellow citizens, but of people of other tongues and native-born Americans as well. Although this particular picture series that you are seeing has sometimes been identified as being from that German bicentennial celebration in 1883, among some other events, it's almost certainly not, and instead probably comes from a different parade later in the 1880s. We know this for a few different reasons, from the style of the clothing that they're wearing to the number of stars shown on the American flag, but maybe the biggest giveaway is the fact that the pictured parade here lacks the elaborate horse-drawn floats that would have been part of the 1883 festivities. Still, there aren't that many pictures of parades in Wausau in the 1880s, and even if this isn't the German bicentennial celebration of 1883, it is at least a picture of a parade in Wausau in the 1880s, and does at least give us an idea of what an event might look like around that time. The German bicentennial celebrations, though, were more than just a parade. After the procession passed the spectators, they followed the participants to a number of halls that were scattered across Wassa for further festivities. Appropriately enough for a celebration of German-American history, the most prominent of these venues was not Music Hall off Washington Street or Forest Hall off Jackson, but rather it was at the Beer Garden on Grand Avenue. The location would have a long history in the area, from being home to this Wassa's first beer garden, to eventually being developed by a private citizen and given over to the city of Wassa to create Hammond Park, which is what we know it as today. Although the area has certainly changed quite a bit since the 1880s, even back then it was a popular place for people to get together and enjoy the outdoors. But the main reason that the beer garden was located here which, by the way, was called Schubert's Park, was not because of its natural beauty, although certainly there's something to be said about that. But instead, Schubert's Park was situated right here because it happened to be in the shadow of the two largest breweries in Wassa. George Reuter had established the first brewery back in 1860, and in 1868, Frank Matthew had chosen a plot of land just to Reuter's north to set up his own brewery. But while the brewers were located right next door to one another, there were enough thirsty citizens in the area to keep both breweries busy well into the 1800s. Eventually, in the early 1900s, the two companies would decide to merge to create a single brewery, first to become the American Brewing Company, and then later, after Prohibition was repealed, to become Matthew Reuter. The close proximity to the breweries made Schubert's Park a popular venue for the area's Central European immigrants, who found it a pleasant place to gather and have some beer with friends. And before long, the popularity of the park led them to expand to more than just the outdoor beer garden part, but also to erect a music or a concert hall, which, with the attached bowling alley, provided a nice place for indoor activities as well. Schubert's Park was created by a man named Frank Schubert. After emigrating from his native Austria, Schubert had wandered around the United States for about a decade before finally settling in Wausau in the late 1870s. And he certainly was in pretty good company by this point. According to the 1880 federal census, a full 40% of the 16,521 residents of Marathon County had been born outside of the United States with the overwhelming majority of them being from German-speaking parts of Europe. And Frank Schubert correctly understood that the many Germans who were coming to Marathon County were bringing their cultural traditions and expectations with them, and so would appreciate having that most German of an institution, the beer garden. And by the time that the German community of Marathon County got together to plan the celebration for that German bicentennial, it made sense to have Schubert's beer garden be the host for the main event following the parade. According to contemporary accounts of that celebration, 
Several thousand people passed through the beer garden that afternoon and evening. And to put that into context, at the time there were only something like 20,000 people in the whole of Marathon County. And so even if we conservatively interpret that thousands to be 2,000 people, that would mean that a whole 10% of the entire Marathon County would be at Schubert's Park during that one day. And they went there to take part in the festivities, to hear the speeches, to eat the food and drink the beverages, and maybe sing a song or two together. That last activity was not uncommon thing to have happen at the beer garden, as drinking songs would naturally accompany the Germans doing the drinking. As a musician himself, Schubert recognized that a band to accompany this pastime might help to bring in business to the park, and maybe would allow him to get involved in other parts of the community at large as well. At the time, there was no brass band here in Wassa. The old Wassa cornet band that had played for a few years in the late 1860s and early 1870s had been devastated first by the formation of a competing outfit led by Karl Reisenweber, and then later by Karl Reisenweber's decision to take his band to Milwaukee. But there were still a few decent musicians left in town, and so in 1880, Frank Schubert pulled them together to form his own cornet band. Now, if you're somewhat familiar with what a modern band instrument looks like, and honestly, even if you aren't, these horns that you see in Schubert's band might look a bit odd, a bit different. These are what are called sax horns, which were designed with fixed mouthpieces and long bells that were meant to be played over the musician's shoulder. The idea was that, for example, if you were in the American Civil War, you would have a military band outfitted with these instruments, and you'd put that band at the front of the column of troops that would be marching from camp to camp. And as the soldiers spend all day marching along, they would at least have their spirits raised by the music that was coming back to them from the band at the front of the column. Schubert's band likely inherited a few of these sax horns from the old Wassa cornet band, or else perhaps found them to be affordable options when looking for new instruments. Because if given the choice, they would likely have followed the cue of just about every other major military-style band in the United States, who by the late 1860s were moving away from the old sax horns in favor of more versatile brass instruments, which were often designed with forward-facing bells. But for a town like Wassa, these antiquated horns did the trick just fine for what was needed. And over the early 1880s, the old sax horns would gradually be phased out of the bands in favor of more modern alternatives. And you can see that trend in this picture of Schubert's band from about five years later. By this point, alto and baritone horns, plus a few trombones there in the back, would have taken the roles filled by the old sax horns. And over the course of the next decade, the local brass bands would further develop their brass sections by introducing even larger instruments like the euphonium and tuba, which would help to fill out the bottom register and the sound of the band. Now you may have also noted that Schubert's band includes some woodwind instruments as well. Over the first half of the 1900s, America's most popular military bands were mostly using a pure brass instrumentation and would not have had any woodwind instruments. But again, in the late 1860s, things were changing, and many groups were starting to integrate clarinets, flutes, and piccolos. These woodwind instruments added a different texture to the sound of the band and would help to fill a compositional role for a more sophisticated kind of music that was becoming popular, especially among the new German immigrants. And notably, while the brass section would continue to develop over the next few years, the woodwind section stayed mostly the same, at least until the 20th century. This is not how it worked all over the United States. In many places, the American military band system adopted more of a British or a French model, by adding double reeds like the oboe and bassoon or the saxophone family. But here in Marathon County, they were content to stick with what they had. Getting back to Frank Schubert, after he created his cornet band around 1880, it meant that Wassa once again had a band to call its own. And over the next few years, Schubert's band would be in great demand across Marathon County and beyond. Eventually, this did let him get involved in other musical ventures as well. Around 1882, Schubert started a juvenile band in Wausau. While this was probably the first of its kind for Marathon County, 
these juvenile bands were already a very well-established way for a smaller community to train up a new generation of instrumental musicians, while also having the benefit of keeping the local boys from getting into too much trouble by giving them something constructive to work on. And this juvenile band took off fairly well here in Marathon County, and its success gradually pulled Schubert's focus away from his commercial band. And this would not improve when, in 1884, Schubert established yet another music organization that was uniquely German when he created the Wasser Liederkranz. In German, Liederkranz translates roughly to song circle. This was sort of a hybrid social group where they would get together, uh, centered around singing songs in German. The Wasser Liederkranz is pictured here, participating at a Sangerfest, or a singing festival, held in Sheboygan sometime around 1936 or so. And it's interesting to note that they would continue to get together and sing in German until about 1946. And the fact that they were singing in German through both world wars is a testament to the strength of German culture and tradition in the area. But Frank Schubert would not be with this group for all that much of its surprisingly long history. Like the music leaders of Wassa that had come before him, by the mid-1880s or so, Schubert was starting to struggle to keep enough irons in the fire to support his growing family as a professional musician. And after he got a job offer from out of town, he decided that the time had come for him to leave Wassa. Although he does break with tradition a little bit here, instead of going back to Milwaukee, he instead goes west to California, where he would take a job um, and spend most of the rest of his life directing music for a monastery. But Frank Schubert's departure around 1888 was not the devastating setback to the music scene here that had accompanied other music leaders leaving Marathon County. After Schubert announced that he was going to leave, the Wasseliterkrans simply elected a new director, and for the next 36 years it would be under the very capable leadership of Gustav Müller. As for the commercial band and the beer garden, even before he had decided to leave town, Schubert had already given up control over those to a man named Anton Jakubka. Jakubka was a Hungarian immigrant who had arrived in Wassa in 1885, and shortly thereafter was playing as part of Schubert's band. And within a year, he had not only taken over the running of Schubert's park, but was in charge of his own brass band. Shown here in 1886, led in conjunction with another occasional band leader of Wassa, a man named George Gear. We haven't really talked about George Gear up to this point, but we very easily could have. And it's kind of interesting to think of this whole discussion about the rise of the concert band and the music scene here in Marathon County from his perspective. He too put together a brass band, which he operated out of a venue where alcohol was served to the German community here, in his case, the saloon that he owned on the west side of Wassa. Actually, if we go back to that 1883 German Bicentennial celebration that we started this all with, well, that parade had featured two brass bands, one under the direction of Frank Schubert, and the other under George Gier. But he was never quite as prominent as Schubert or Jakubka or the person that we're going to talk about next. And while he was a constant presence in the music scene throughout his life, he was always more dedicated to keeping his saloon running than keeping a commercial band in operation. But by the end of the 1880s, both Jakubka and Gear, as well as the musicians in their band, had joined up with the most successful band leader that emerged from the decade, a man named Frank G. Dana. Next time, we will talk about Dana and examine how he rose to become the most successful band leader of his era, how he secured a commission as the regimental band of the Wisconsin National Guard, and ultimately, how his decision to leave his home in Marathon County devastated the instrumental music scene here once again.